as soon as the Guilty Gear Strive beta was open to everybody and everybody was able to access training mode, something happened to the game. The part where a fighting game becomes available to everybody, so everybody has the, the ability to grind and to find things. This experimental stage of the game is my favorite part. Unless you're one of the lab rats, because there's quite a few lab rats around, you won't be able to see how the game is able to be experienced or how it evolves. So today, what I wanna do, I want to go through and show you guys how the game has developed in just a day. Maybe even a little bit more than that. A lot of things have happened. Today, I want to go in and explore everything that has developed in Guilty Gear Strive. For the most part, we'll be using Twitter. Twitter is definitely not the most <laughs> perfect app to say the least, but it is an app that is really, really great for fighting game tech. It's probably the best app for fighting game tech. So if you're looking into fighting games and you wanna learn tech on a specific game or a specific character, Twitter is probably the perfect app. So uh, we're gonna be looking into that. And of course I'll be going into everybody, uh, everybody that has contributed there. And then for YouTube, I'll be linking everything that we look at, all the tweets, all the people that we looked at, I'll be linking it in the description down below. Let's go ahead and get into the development of Guilty Gear Strive. Combos are definitely the first thing that people, when they first get on, they try to do. They try to get, well, what's a launcher? What's, what's something that can get me long, juicy, and nice damaging combos. So that's the first thing. So let's take a look at the first ever, first thing that I wanna show you guys. Take a look at this soul combo. Take a look at what has developed. All of a sudden you start to see dash cancels being implemented because there are dash cancelable normals in this game. You also start to see a bunch of jump cancels as well and dash cancels in the air. Whole bunch of different things and that goes corner to corner too. Not just that, but well, it keeps going. Hold on, give it a second. Bam. Corner switch combos where you can wall break for more meter and for more damage. So that's just a small example as to what you can do right now. It's pretty stylish, it's pretty fancy. What else can you do? Well, one of the biggest ones that I was thinking about where this character will do a lot of different things is Milia. I thought Milia was definitely gonna be doing a lot because she had a lot of different jump cancels. She has two different jump cancels or two different jumps. But Milia, she can do cool things with her special moves and two air dashes to do some crazy combos, end it off with wall break and get some meter gain. One character I didn't think was gonna be very combo heavy or very good, just in general, I didn't really like how he was like, all of a sudden got switched. Like my opinion of this character got changed ever since this game got opened up to everybody else. Faust. I love the, I love the wall bounce combos. The wall bounce combos are have turned into one of my favorite things ever. Then he started implementing items in there. Bam, blow it up. Wall splat again, and then wall break for some pretty juicy damage. People are extremely, extremely good at finding out what to do to be able to get the damage and, and, the, and the juiciness. One thing I especially like about this combo is the fact that you can get a 6H right there into a command grab. So you see that Freddy Krueger looking animation that he had? That is his command grab. So he basically did 5K into 6H into command grab to cancel the animation of the 6H and then continued the combo. I love that. The wall bounce has been something that has been discovered recently. Not a lot of people were using it at first, but now that we discovered that most characters have wall bounce properties to their moves. They're starting to go into some crazy ass combos. So Nago, take a look at Nago. Uh, uh. Oh yeah, there he goes. Big damage. And not just that, it's efficient in blood and blood meter. There's also more combos, counter hit stuff. Bam, bam, wall bounce, more wall bounces. And I love the falling J uh, JK. Oh my God, that's probably what made this combo for me is the fact that he does the dust 
right there and then falls down and does the JK and continues with a 5K. I love that. And you can see how much damage he does. When it comes to Nago combos, you notice that his damage was outrageous. And Nago has death combos. So this combo in particular, it's a counter hit combo. So if you get caught DPing and you whiff it and you don't have a burst, you're going to die by Nago's hands. So here's the combo. There it is. Counter hit. Uh, uh, uh. Wall break and go into super. Perfect. Just like that. Nago does a lot of damage. And if you let him, he will kill you. Now, the reason why is this so much damage, it's not because he does that all the time. The main reason why is because he's built Risk. And this is why I find this game so interesting. Risk is the meter, the little purple meter right here. If you build even a little bit of it, the damage that you take when you do finally get hit is going to be huge because the more you risk you have, the more damage you take when you finally get hit. Hamblog, you see that? He built a little bit of risk, baited the DP, went into some big damage. More than likely, this would have still done a lot of damage, but not killed if it wasn't for that risk. So that's why I did so much damage. The same cannot be said <laughs> about Chip. When Nago faces a Chip player, he looks at him with a big smile. This is Nago versus Chip. Build up the blood rage. He had a little bit of risk, actually. He did have a little, I don't know if you guys saw that, but he had a little bit of risk. Counter hit 2H, 5H. The reason why they did so much damage is because he did build a little bit of risk for that initial 2H. And then of course his super when he's in blood rage does a ton of damage, but Chip has little to no health in this game. As of right now, Chip is like the the lab character. It's a huge thing going on on Twitter that, you know, Chip is the character that is on the receiving end whenever you lab a combo to see if you can kill him. Here's the thing, Ramlethal, which is a character not really known to do one hit KO combos or anything like that, can kill Chip in one single hit. So let me explain this. Now you don't see, there's no risk. So what the hell? Does that just kill him no matter what? No. <laughs> the reason why that's this so much damage, this is a change that happened in Strive. Two factors to this. Number one, it's counter hits. Initially, it's gonna do a lot of damage, more damage than normal. Two, he did a Gamma. Gamma Blade, in this game, a clone that has a hitbox and that can hurt Chip. As soon as he sent the clone out, he's in counter hit mode, and his clone takes damage as well. And Ramlethal hit both of them, which essentially ended up being a one hit KO. So you might be telling yourself, oh, then if that's the case, that's super unlikely. Ram can't kill Chip, wrong. But Ramlethal can still kill. So don't think that you're safe just yet, Chip players. You better be begging for a health buff. However, Chip players do have something. Chip players also came out and they started to lab the character too. And Chip has some pretty cool things. I won't leave out the Chip players, of course. I gotta show off some cool things about the character too. So Super Noji doing God's work here, doing a dust combo here. Dust, ending it off, throwing a star, bam. Already does have set play. Whenever you do dust, let's try that one more time. You do the combo in the air, throw the throw the star, bam. So chips, chip players do have something thing, and he does have really cool combos too. The wall run combos, ridiculous. His Oki is actually pretty nice too. With all that being said, some really cool things have opened up as you just saw. Really cool combos, wall bounces and stuff. Well, there seems to be something else that they have found. 
And like I said, this all happened in one day. The next piece of tech is pri probably my favorite piece of tech that has been found in Guilty Gear so far, or at least one of them, I should say. Dash cancels. As you saw in previous combos, you did dash, you did a, a move that's dash cancelable, dash up, and then you continue the combo. But what if I told you that dash cancels can also be used to be able to do impossible combos or combos that were not even supposed to be done? In this video, it explains how Soul Bad Guy, who has a lot of dash cancelable normals, which is essentially 5k or fi close 5s, you can dash cancel them, as you can see. Close 5S, you can dash cancel it. Now, you can now do 5K into Fafnir. Normally that's not possible. You cannot cancel anything into Fafnir. Try it, try doing 5K into Fafnir, 5K into uh, Vortex Viper, you can't do it. But with this piece of tech, you can. The way you do this, close 5S or, five, or 5K into the button you do the special move with, and the and a dash cancel macro if you have those set up you can do this well there's a reason why you couldn't you weren't able to special cancel them in the first place this is a combo using that technique bam and look at the look at the damage R roman cancel here we go Using that same technique, you press the dash cancel macro and the special move, you get this into super. Now a lot of you are probably thinking, wait a minute, is that a freaking infinite? Did I just see an infinite? Yes. Yes, you did. This is an infinite. The reason why is because you do it over and over. Now, these type of infinites, they don't really count too much because you can burst out of them. So you don't have to worry too much. But, as you saw in the previous combos, using this technique or these infinite-like combos, you can do some pretty gnarly combos. Now, the reason why this is an infinite and why you can't tech out of it is because they took out air teching in Guilty Gear Strive. Soul isn't the only one that has an infinite. As we all saw, I uploaded a video onto my YouTube that show showcases a Geo infinite, Giovanna. And the one that found this, of course, was Uri, who's a Blaze Blue player. This is the infinite that, the first one that was discovered, that I know of, I'm pretty sure this is. Essentially, it doesn't use any techniques. It's just good timing, but it's an infinite nonetheless. It just requires a lot of timing. So as you see, Uri essentially is trying to eyeball when the opponent falls down, and he delays the 5S into the 214S. The reason I'm showing off these infinites is because you can do some pretty dope ass combos. Bam, get the counter hit. Now this one's using 2H. Same concept, but with 2H. And then go into wall break. It's a super cool combo that uses a little bit of an infinite type of uh, concept. Like I said, we scratched the surface. We still got a lot more to do to go. We still haven't even tapped into Roman cancels. Now, when it comes to Roman cancels, there's many different types. There is the regular red Roman cancel. There's the purple Roman cancel. There's the blue Roman cancel. This is a perfect example of purple RC. You can use it for ram set play. So that's an example of that hitting you, but if you tech the grab, the explosion of the sword will hit you. Alright, now the reason why this is so good is because of Drift Roman Cancel. This right here. You're able to throw the sword and drift because you can regularly Roman Cancel. So you basically use the dash macro and then Roman Cancel. Then you get your Drift Roman Cancel. It pushes Ramlethal forward and you're able to be in the correct position to get a grab, immediate grab. At that point, the rest is history. It blows up, you get a free combo, free wall break, 
all that good jazz. Let me show you another example. This is an example of purple Roman cancel being used in a combo. Drift purple Roman cancel. Just like that, from mid-screen, be able to get all that. So what the hell just happened is essentially you do 5, 5S, five 5H, five and then you press the macro, or you press, you basically dash, you press the dash macro, you do Roman cancel, and at that point, because the Roman cancel has slowed down mechanics, and the drift pushes you forward, you can get another close 5H, 2H, into dagger so like round start ramlethal is a problem at least in the second round when she has meter purple roman cancel isn't the only roman cancel that is being developed right now there's blue roman cancel what it is is if you're in the neutral you're just not doing anything and you press the roman cancel button you get blue roman cancel what that does it speeds you it puts you at normal speed and the opponents if it hits at slowdown speed nage which is a, a god you can do things like that. That blue Roman, the drift blue Roman cancel can put you in the air for an instant overhead like that. And that's a low right there. So essentially a blue Roman cancel, bam, cancel it. That's an overhead, cancel it. That's a low. What that does is whenever you backdash and you do a blue Roman cancel, it puts you in the air. And then when you jiggle the joystick or the directional pad in a few different places, it leaves you in the air and you can come down. And whenever you Roman cancel as well, and you press a button immediately after you Roman cancel, it cancels out the entire Roman cancel and it leaves you in the air for an instant overhead. It's fast blue drift Roman cancel. That's right. There's so many different branches of Roman cancel. Essentially gives everybody in the game a 50-50. If you have meter, of course. That's not the only thing that you can do with blue Roman cancel. You can use blue Roman cancel for more than just one thing or two things. You can also use it to punish your opponents. For example, Just like that. So what just happened? Well, Ramlethal with the button and the opponents, Blue Drift Roman cancel, which sped him forward or pushed him forward and slowed down Ramlethal. And that got you access to a big punish. So it is crazy what you can do with Blue Roman cancel. We saw the, we saw Nage with Faust doing some of that stuff. And this is another example of every character including Sol having mix up with blue Roman cancel. This is how you kind of uh, put it, put the blue Roman cancel uh, in practical use. Just like that. So what just happened? Wait a minute. I thought if you did a move and you Roman canceled it, it's supposed to be a red Roman cancel or at least a purple Roman cancel. Here's how it goes. The reason why he was able to do a drift blue Roman cancel at this point is because close 5s is dash cancelable you can only do this with dash cancelable moves so soul close 5s is dash cancelable you go 5s drift blue blue roman cancel and then you mix them up when go for the low and because the opponent is slowed down you can go for a, a sweep they'll stay in the air for you to do another close 5s into a nice confirm. Let's take a look at the overhead mix-up. This is the overhead variant. Because of the slowdown feature of Blue Roman Cancel, you can do a dust. Now hold it down, just the fastest version of dust. You can combo off of dust because the opponent slowed down. And that also slows down uh, hit stun, which means that 5D into 5K is possible. So we just saw the, like, the overhead, the low, well, that's not the only thing that we have with Blue Roman Cancels. We also have fuzzies. If you don't know what a fuzzy is, you're about to see it. And you're able to combo off of the fuzzy too. It's gross. It is. And I also want to tell you guys that there's professional players and there's people picking up on this type of stuff. And man, is it dirty. Sonic Fox playing Ramlethal already taken advantage of this tech going like that through a sword proper roman cancel upwards and go for a fuzzy
Let's do it again. This time. With a low. So, let's take a look at the first option. Sonic Fox throws a sword and is able to drift Roman cancel upwards. Drift Roman cancel upwards after canceling the sword. The sword gets thrown. Hitbox occurs. You cannot escape this. Then, does a fast Roman can purple Roman cancel into JP. After that, JP is jump cancelable. And that leads to a JK. And that hits overhead, alright? So you have a double overhead situation going on. Throw sword. Drifts upwards. JP, that's an overhead. Block that high. Jump cancel. JK, that's a high too. Block that overhead. Sword activates. You, sword blows up, I mean. Then you continue the combo with JD. Close 5S into DP, uh, DPP. And then that wall sticks. And then you do 5K into 214P. And that wall sticks. Now the second option. Same exact thing. JP, jump. Don't, don't junk cancel this time. If he's expecting the overhead, 2K. That's a low. Blows up the sword. Same exact situation. It's something that I didn't expect Guilty Gear Strive to have. A lot of people tend to bag on the game before it even gets opened up uh, with how basic it is and how it's not looking like Guilty Gear and how, you know, they, they, they took away some things, but they don't really get to see what are the possibilities of the game. Um, they judge a book by its cover. And if anything, I hope that this little seminar has proved that fighting games, doesn't matter how basic they look on the surface level, deep inside, they will have a lot of dirt. They will have something there for you to have fun with and experiment and have your own individuality. Even a game like, I'm gonna bring it up, uh, BB Tag has a lot of crazy uh, ingenuity behind the mechanics. People will find a way to break the game, that is correct. Speaking of breaking the game, by the way, there's one more thing that I wanna do to end this off with, all right? Like I said, people are labbing the hell out of this and they're finding out the craziest of things. Apparently, the movements that you can do with faultless defense is nuts. Whoa! Whoa! Wait a minute. Look at him go! Sonic the Hedgehog. It's going as fast as the chat is because of Zen's raid. What's up, Zen? <laughs> What's up, Zen? How you doing? I'm glad that you came in. Apparently how you do this is you have to press forward and like it's like super weird. I still don't know how to do it myself because it's I can't do it. It's like impossible for me to do but i think what you have to do is basically hold the back i'm sorry hold the forward button while also doing faultless defense and the more you press it the more you mash it you just launch forward it's crazy. like you can do this with like hitboxes pad but this is not possible with joystick because i think you have to hold forward. you can't possibly do that with a joystick it's not it's literally impossible so you have to do this with a hitbox or a key box or a mix box or a pad because you have to hold forward and then press back and defaultless defense and you just go launching forward. Just like that. <laughs> it's funny looking, man. Hey, what the hell? Like, is Soul the only one to do this? Like, no. Even a character like Potemkin, big old beefy character who has no movement whatsoever, can also do this and benefit from this. Look at him go! Look at him go! Just like that, two forms of movement. One to spend meter, one to wave dash at him. Taking a look at how the wave dashing kind of looks. Can you apply this to a real match? Yes. Yes, you can. Before you can even blink, 
this man is throwing you on the ground and you're eating before you can even blink. Imagine pots doing this to you. Like before you can even blink, just and pot buster. Just like that. Yeah. Aren't you also guarding the whole time? Yes. You are. Unless it's unless you DP right at the moment you get grabbed. Oh! That's another thing. You can't DP. Because DPs are grabbable in this game. Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but one of the things that people are very upset at in this game is the fact that you can grab DPs. So, in conclusion, uh, yeah, there's a lot of amazing things that happen whenever you give a game to everybody. And you give training mode and they basically break it open. It's my favorite part and I, in my opinion, it's the best part about a fighting game. When everybody just contributes and try to find the sauce and try to break the game and try to find the coolest thing or the most damaging thing or you know just try to be able to make the game incredibly fun to watch and having some tech to make to evolve the meta and this is by far my favorite stage of any game and i can't wait for it to happen again when the game officially releases because right now we're just in the beta so a lot of things are going to change this is just scratching the surface too. I remember the last time we were in this situation was with Granblue. I remember when Granblue had the beta up, we weren't even doing half the things that we do now. Just remembering it like it was yesterday, I swear to God. Right now it's just like normal to EX, normal to EX and to sweep. Before it was like auto combo, special move and that's it. Uh, we didn't know what to do or how to do the optimal stuff back in the day, even though there was more options back in the day and it's probably going to be the same thing in strife all i hope for is that some of these things are actually very good ideas and very fun techniques like the whole jump cancel slash uh dash cancel mechanic to be able to cancel into another special move and make for combos that weren't necessarily possible before i like that idea my suggestion would be to implement something like a combo juggle like a juggle mechanic combo limit mechanic something like that to prevent infinites so it's, it's, it's fun. I love this stage. <laughs>